Hello, sir. Hi. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you very much indeed. Um, would you please introduce yourself? My name is um, Dr. Chikalo Chulufia. I am Member of Parliament and uh, Minister of Health uh, for the Zambian government. Um, Zambia is really spearheading uh, the, the work on the interlinkage of the SDGs. So I'm curious about how you're doing that. How, how is Zambia a model to other countries in the region? Thank you very much. First I must begin by saying that in Zambia we believe that health is central to sustainable development. For our people to be productive, they need to be healthy. So we have made health an economic investment. Now the question is, how do you ensure the people are healthy? You must agree that there are many factors that lie outside the health sector, but determine the health of our people. Water and sanitation, nutrition, housing and infrastructure, education. Now these social determinants of health lie outside the health sector, but these are what make the difference between a healthy population and a non-healthy population. Therefore, in Zambia, we've agreed that we need a multi-sectoral approach to health, an all-sector integrated approach to development by coherently coordinating with other stakeholders to address social determinants of health, our population will be healthy. So, the call to action in Zambia and our, the, the, the presidency of His Excellency Mr. Edgar Chagolungu, we are taking an all-sector integrated approach to development. So we are saying, for our people to be healthy, let's deliver health services in a continuum, beginning from health promotion to disease prevention, curative and rehab services. For us to promote good health in line with SDG 3, we need to ensure that we deliver messages that will protect people against being ill. We need to ensure our people access clean and safe water to prevent diseases. We need to ensure that our people are protected from ill health by addressing the various determinants of health. That links then many SDGs. I'll tell you, for example, that energy will power clean water and sanitation because you need solar-powered boreholes in places where there is no, uh, where we're off-grid. You need to power agricultural interventions through energy. So then, SDG 7 on energy unlocks SDG 3. If you have access to energy, then you are able to power interventions that will make sure the people are healthy. Therefore, you are speaking to SDG 3. If you are able to energize health, you are speaking to the health-seeking behavior of the people because a literate society is a better health-seeking society. So you are talking to the SDG on education, that's four. If you empower communities, you power communities, our women will be able to indulge in various socioeconomic activities. So you are speaking to SDG 5. So energy is an enabler. It unlocks health, it unlocks education, and many women empowerment programs. And what I'd like to emphasize is this. All the interventions that you need to ensure that the people are healthy along the continuum of care, be it health promotive, disease preventive, curative or rehab, require to be powered. All the determinants of health outside the health sector require to be powered. So there is need for a blend of solutions of energy within urban areas where there is a greed. Yes, it's easy. But in the rural areas where people are and where access to energy is prohibited or is inhibited by the fact that the grid is so far away, it is important for us to invest in solar for health projects. And I speak of solar for health projects off-grid because I believe that health infrastructure could be the centerpiece where you invest in health, where you invest in solar for health at the clinic and use that as social capital to be able to now attract investment or deliver investment for power in the communities. A clinic may only need two kilowatts of power, put 10. And since there is a social premium you know, placed on health facilities and health workers, then you'll be able now to spring from the health center to power the community, to power the school, to power agricultural interventions, to attract human resources to work in the various sectors. So 
So energy is an enabler and unlocks access to good health, to good education, and to empowerment programs. So we only have 13 years to the target we've set ourselves to ensure sustainable development. Right. So we must order the way we do business. One, we must move faster and we must coordinate and ensure that the coordination is coherent and the order of doing business must be such that we address everything that determines the health of our people in a coherent manner. And that way, we shall be able to ensure our population is healthy and is productive. Zeroing in on the health sector again, if you look at health promotion messages that you need to deliver to the people, you will only be able to do that if our people have access to radios, to phones, that requires powering. Health promotion will save millions of lives, telling people, enabling them with information on how to keep healthy, how to prevent non-communicable diseases by physical activity, good nutrition, will save millions of lives. Disease prevention, just a stable cold chain, will keep vaccines efficacious and will protect millions of children from vaccine-preventable illnesses. The value chain for drugs to combat TB, malaria, and HIV will actually be maintained by stable energy supply, and that way the drugs will remain efficacious and our fight against these high mortality emergencies will be enhanced. So I am saying energy is required to power all the interventions along the continuum of care, and it's important that we agree today that investing in energy enables health. Well, and all the issues that you mentioned and yes. uh, your approach will require many partnerships. Yeah. So I see the government has the initiatives. How do you partner with civil society, with the youth in your country, with the companies? How do you make sure that this is actually a coherent approach, the coherent approach you were talking about? How is, how is that, how can you achieve uh, moving forward? As a country, we've agreed that our resources are finite and they are inadequate. So we've extended a hand of alliance to civil society, to corporate institutions, to all stakeholders, to partner with us to promote the common aspirations of our people. So we rely on stronger partnerships and we'll continue to invest in stronger partnerships with all corporates, with all philanthropies, with society, with the community to ensure that we push the agenda of development and remembering that health is central to sustainable development and remembering that to be healthy we need to address all the social determinants of health including access to affordable energy which will unlock health education and uh, empowerment generally in development. And what do you think about the timeline? Do you think it's achievable? 13 years is a pretty short time it's a summon to all of us to run together and faster. What is important to note is this. If we continue operating in silos, we will not succeed within the time frame. It's time to agree now that enough lives have been lost due to vaccine-preventable illnesses. It's time to agree now that enough women have been lost while trying to deliver because there was inadequate lighting when a delivery was being conducted. It is time to agree that enough lives have been lost because the life-saving blood transfusion that that bleeding woman needed was not there because of inadequate energy to supply or to sustain you know, the, the, the supply chain for drugs. It's time to agree that enough children have been lost due to anemia because of infectious diseases like malaria. And if we agree, then we should say, let's invest in energy to stop lives from being lost. Because if you don't switch it on, a life is switched off. Today, we are a consequence, you and me, of strong child survival programs. We are beneficiaries of immunization programs. We owe it to the future to invest in child survival. We owe it to this globe to ensure that our children are protected from vaccine-preventable illnesses. So investing in energy is a critical investment in the development. Energy is cross-cutting, and I speak as Minister of Health 
as the biggest beneficiary of investment in health. And I'm calling for strong solar for health investments for rural areas and also stronger investments for in, 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 in energy for the whole continuum of care in the health sector and for various determinants of health. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much indeed.